Hey guys, my name is Shai, and this is the reading for the first week of May. I'm recording this on Sunday the 1st, and of course here we are integrating <laughs> the solar eclipse from the weekend. <sighs> I gotta say, I am sitting here with some freshly picked sage. I literally picked this stuff a few minutes ago. I just got inside. As you can see, this is not the white sage that you might be familiar with, that everybody smudges with. This is blue sage and where I live, so I live in the uh, sage steppe desert of the Pacific Northwest in the interior of the west coast of North America, right? And here, this blue sagebrush grows everywhere. It just, like, I got this literally just outside of my apartment building on the side of the road. Like, this grows everywhere. It's basically the natural plant. <laughs> it is so abundant, and there are places not far from my house where you can just go out into the, you know, untouched desert, and this stuff just literally grows as far as the eye can see in every direction. I love it. I love it. I love it so much. The smell... I wish you could smell it. It is amazing. <laughs> and um, I just felt so drawn to this because I was feeling quite destabilized from the solar eclipse energy, not really in a bad way, but in a letting go kind of way. And I couldn't, I was really just kind of struggling to find my center all morning. And, you know, I took my dog for a walk. And of course the sage is growing because <laughs> it's finally spring here. We're having a late spring. And th this, w w like when the sage is in bloom, which is, you know, all the time except for winter, the, the air everywhere just, just smells like sage to the point that after you live here for a while, you can't even really smell it. So, you know, when other people might smudge with dry sage that they have bought, I just get to go outside and smell the sage as I literally go out and like snort a sage, <laughs> like a sage bush, right? <laughs> because it smells so good. And I just had to bring some into the house. And I, I'm going on and on at length about this because this was apparently exactly what I needed today. Like as soon as I smelled it <laughs> and I've just been sitting here breathing it in and as I'm talking, I can just feel it like filling up my lungs and just, <sighs> it is so good. I feel so much more stable and at ease and like everything is gonna be fantastic. <laughs> so thank you beautiful Blue Sage for being exactly the medicine that I needed today. And I'm just gonna let this little piece of sage hang out here. And, you know, I really wish this was a thing that was more, like, th a thing that people could buy, <laughs> you know, because it's so abundant. It is so abundant. It just grows everywhere. Um, and I don't know why it's not more of a thing. Um, anyway, so the <laughs> integrating the solar eclipse energy. Um, I think the best way for me to address that is to just describe a dream I had this morning where... I, uh, somebody was trying to throw me out of a plane and I was like, look, I did not agree to this. I did not agree to jumping out of a plane, right? I was I was really upset um, because, you know, in real life, um, I'm quite terrified of skydiving. I don't think I could ever get myself to jump out of a plane, right? So in this dream, I was being forced to jump out of a plane and they kind of like pushed me out of the plane and I was like clinging to the landing gear and I was like, this is fine. I can just cling here forever. I will just hang on. And then I realized eventually the plane is going to have to land and I will be crushed, right? So I was like, hmm, this is, this is turning into a bit of a predicament. So then I kept trying to check my parachute. I was like pulling my parachute out of the parachute backpack and <laughs> like checking it but of course when I did that that activated the parachute and then it blew away and I was like ugh my paranoia and my OCD about double checking things just caused me to lose my parachute and then they gave me another parachute and I was still not ready to jump off. I just kept clinging. I just kept hanging on and then I realized that the plane had been descending and it was getting to the point where um, I either had to jump now or if the plane got any lower, there wouldn't be enough distance for my parachute to unfold, right? I, it was like too close to the ground. My parachute wouldn't work and I would just hit the ground and, you know, splat. So I was essentially finally forced to jump. And then, of course, a few moments of terror in free fall waiting for the parachute to open. 
um, eventually when the parachute actually did open, it was so peaceful and beautiful and just the floating in the air. I was like, ah, oh, this is what I, this I can deal with. This I can do. The free fall sucked, but the floating in the air and the parachute is amazing and beautiful. And I just wanted to hang there forever. But of course I very soon had to land because I had been clinging onto the plane for so long. And then I, I and then sure, I was still kind of annoyed that I was forced to jump out of a plane, but I was even more annoyed with myself for having not just just jumped out sooner because if I had jumped sooner, if I had stopped clinging, if I had just let go and jumped, then I would have had more time to enjoy the experience of floating in the air in a parachute. So that is what I think the theme of the week is, is like let go and leap, right? That's probably what I named this video in the thumbnail. Let go and leap, let go and leap. And it's like the, the thing that you have to let go of because it might feel like, you know, it might feel like you're being forced to jump out of a plane and you might like feel like you have to let go of yourself, right? Let go of your safety, let go of even like your consent, right? Because I didn't feel like I had agreed to being, to being thrown out of a plane, right? But it's like the sooner you just let go of it, whatever the thing is, the sooner you're going to feel better. Though it doesn't mean the letting go part is going to be fun. There might be a few moments of free fall and sheer terror, but you're going to feel better afterwards. This is like really rip the bandaid off. And um, this is going to be astrologically reflected, I think, throughout the week because the two like big, big time... Um, Transits this week are on May 2nd, Venus enters Aries. So, you know, Venus, all your feminine and Venusian energies are going to become a lot more impulsive. And then on May the 5th, the sun is going to conjunct Uranus, which is like big time surprises, right? Big, big, big time surprises. Expect anything, don't, but don't expect anything because when it, with Uranus, you can't, it's like expect the unexpected and expect nothing because you, you can't expect it, right? There's no telling what can happen when Uranus is involved. And it's interesting because I'm actually born with sun conjunct Uranus. And <laughs> so I, I kind of live with this energy. And it was really funny when I was born because I was born a month early, right? So my mom had just gotten off work and she was like, okay, it's like a month before the baby comes and it was just before Christmas and she was just gonna have this nice month to just relax before, you know, having her firstborn baby. <laughs> and then, so the sun comes up and hits Uranus and bam, surprise baby one month early. And it, it, it's even, this is even more interesting to me because the fact that I was born a month early for me, put me in a, it put me in a different year, right? I would have been born like January, um, 20, uh, 1989. Instead, I was born December 1988. And because of the way my school system was when I grew up, um, that put me in a different grade, right? I So I ended up starting, because I was born a month early, I started school a whole year early. And that put me in with, you can imagine how much that changes your life, right? If you start school with an entirely different group of kids, and it means like I graduated a year earlier than I would have. And it's just like it changed my entire life, this whole surprise with Uranus. It can be something coming, like I feel like anything that um, needs to be shaken loose this week is going to be shaken loose. And the more you just let it go and let it get shaken loose, the easier this is going to be. <laughs> Nine of cups. Okay, well, that's fantastic. <laughs> Wish come true, right? Wish come true. <sighs> yes, I think we could all use a little bit of that, right? We could all use a little bit of that. I don't even want any more tarot cards. What was at the bottom? Oh my god, guys. Ten of cups. <laughs> <laughs> Nine of cups. Ten of Cups. You know, all this time I've been, I, I typically read the bottom of the deck as the energy you're moving away from, but recently, for whatever reason, I've been kind of shifting my approach. Lately, for me, the, the bottom of the deck is becoming, at least for right now, I might change my mind again later, but right now I'm reading it as the underlying energy, like what's brewing beneath the surface, right? So, <laughs> happiness, bliss, joy, peace, community, love, wishes coming true, it, like, it, <laughs> yes, like, we, we all need this, oh my god, we all need this, this is what we need, we need the nine and ten of cups, I'm not pulling any more tarot cards, <sighs> and this feeling here, this nine and ten of cups, I kind of understand why it's coming out, because the nine and ten of cups is the feeling I get from this amazing, beautiful blue sage, 
you know. And one of the reasons, man, I'm in story time mode today, apparently. I'm just gonna keep continuing on with my rambling. I gotta, t I gotta, I have to, I gotta take a break and smell this. <sighs> one of the reasons why I love the smell of blue sage so much um, is when I was around, it must've been around 11, 11 or 12 or something like that. And I went on this crazy family vacation to meet the family of my neighbors. And it was way up in this mountain, in the mountains of British Columbia. If anybody knows of a town called Nelson, it's this crazy weird little hippie town out in the middle of the mountains. And, but we stayed up like literally in the mountains. We had to take a logging road to get up there. And there's like no um, running water <laughs> up on this mountain. Like people live, this is like living out in the bush, right? Um, completely out in the bush. And like, you know, no plumbing, no, no anything, but people live up on this mountain. And I met a woman there who, she was a First Nations woman and she made me a necklace. She like, she taught me how to do beading and she helped me make a beaded necklace. And then she made me a pouch with, sit with like, you know, dried this type of sage, blue sage ground up in it. And I wore that necklace for years and years and years. And everywhere I went, I just went around smelling blue sage. And I wish I hadn't lost that necklace. I don't know what I did with it, you know, lost it as a teenager doing who knows what. <sighs> And why is that story relevant? <laughs> um, the other interesting thing about that trip where I ended up on this bizarre mountainside, um, you know, receiving gifts of sage is the people there. This was actually a starseed activation that I had no idea about because these people we were visiting believed that the aliens like were our ancestors. And I had never heard of anything like that before, right? My family was Christian. And of course my family thought these people were crazy. And they had all these stories of how the aliens visit the top of the mountain um, and they see the lights up there and stuff. And at the time I thought they were totally crazy, but now I'm like, oh my God, when I was 12, I was led onto this mountain in the middle of the wilderness where it was apparently like a <laughs> like a spiritual place, right? Like, like in a place where aliens communicate with um, these people who live on the mountain. Um, in hindsight, it it is like so, so special. And one of the women I met there even gave me a, like she made candles and she painted this candles like, you know, uh, like beautiful, like the mountain and the, the glacial lake and it was beautiful. And then she put a little UFO, <laughs> a little UFO on the candle. And I remember one time we always burned this candle. It was like one of like enormous, like huge, huge candles with three wicks on it. And it would just stand there. And one day I was staring at it while it was burning. And as I was staring at it, like the edge of the candle caught fire, like not the wick, but I guess it was the paint, the paint that was around the edge of the candle. It just caught fire as I was staring at it. And the place where it caught fire was the UFO, the little like flying saucer that she painted on the candle. It just burst into flames as I was staring at it. And I remember like, I just like blew it out really quickly, right? Um, but it's like in hindsight, so incredible and special. And I guess I'm remembering all of this right now because of the smell of sage, right? Because smell, you know, famously the strongest sense tied to memory, um, bringing, taking me back. But I think there is a deeper thing going on here because, you know, Pluto just went retrograde and we could be digging up like deep, deep to things out of our past with that. I think that's what's going on here. Um, like reevaluating different events from your past, different uh, like places you've been, different connections you've had, and suddenly having them all click into place and realizing, like connecting the dots, connecting the dots with your past and really going like, wow, I had no idea at the time, like the significance of that event. I had no idea at the time, the significance of that person or my connection to them and just seeing how everything is coming together. And that is a really beautiful gift because if when you can look at the past and see how everything fits together, then that helps you, um, kind of make your peace with whatever is happening right now because then you can understand wow everything fits together including whatever is going on right now it's going to fit together some way somehow right sixth chakra with metatron <laughs> that is perfect so sixth chakra that's the that's the third eye right i almost never use the numbers so i had to think about that for a sec yeah and we, we can see his third eye all opening here opening here um this feels to me like a drastic shift in perception i think that's what's going to be happening with the Uranian energy coming through, right? With the sun conjuncting Uranus. Um, 
it, it can you can have this feeling of nothing has really changed in the physical that much right but suddenly your perception has like massively shifted right it's like you might suddenly feel like a problem you've been having hasn't even really solved itself but suddenly it's just no longer a problem to you anymore because you've cleared out the frequency of it being a problem it's like it you you could wake up in the morning and go like why did I ever care about that so much why did I allow that to stress me out so much it's not really a problem and it's because you're like there's these like frequencies shifting out of your third eye because your third eye is not just um like psychic perception right it is your higher mind and it is like the lens through which you see the world um, but, but like I mean I'm like on a conceptual level right on a conceptual level <sighs> So that whole thing about like, you know, let let go and leap, <laughs> let go and leap, that includes letting go of your perceptual frameworks, right? Letting go of the perceptual frameworks and then allowing yourself to see the nine of ten and cups that are already in front of you. <laughs> oh my god, this this is confirming that the, the message here. Freedom with the horse. Okay, there is a a uh, story that goes along with this card like a like a, a myth that goes along with this horse energy here it's basically to make it a very short <laughs> short version of the story um these horses are essentially have agreed to be in service to humanity because they want to help humanity and so they work for the humans they pull their carriages they pull their plows in the field and all day they work hard in service to the humans and then you know and they're they have to wear saddles and bridles and you know they're they're in their in servitude but at night they let themselves out of their stables and they go out into the field and they frolic wild and free right they play in the meadow and they know that they are free because they know that that feeling of freedom comes from within and it doesn't matter how much work they do in the day and it doesn't matter that they, that they do all this work in service to humanity because they choose to do that work and they know that it is worth it like for whatever reason, right? Like who, who can imagine? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the re what reason the horses have for believing in humanity for is so much and knowing that it is worth it to be in service to humanity and to give up their days to doing this labor and, you know, to just pulling plows and pulling carriages and going on parades and doing all of this work, right? But they, they for whatever, they have their reasons, right? They have their reasons and they know that they choose to do this and every day they choose to do it. This because every night they let themselves out and they frolic in the field and they run and they play and they know that they are free and then they choose to go back to work the next day. So this is like the feeling of freedom is within and it doesn't matter. Uh, it's like, you know, the horses, they have this change in perception. They have this change in, uh, in perception, even though they choose this life of servitude to humanity, they know that they are free and they feel free and they frolic and they run, right? These horses experience the nine and 10 of cups. The horses experience it, even though during the day they're, you know, dragging a heavy plow through through a muddy field, they still know that they are free, right? They don't let the trappings of their, like, work environment, right? They don't let the trappings of their work day to bring them down. They tune into the frequency of freedom inside of themselves, and they know that the nine and ten of cups, this beauty, peace, wish fulfillment, all of it is right there, right inside of them, right there for the taking. And this is a frequency that everyone can tune into no matter how extreme of a situation that you are in. And, you know, it could be, I feel like I, I really learned a lesson today from, from this beautiful sage, right? Because I, like, meditating wasn't helping me. Even going for a walk with the dog and sitting in the sun wasn't helping me. I just, like, couldn't, I was, like, really just struggling to to tune into this, right? I, to tune into this, I was just feeling like I kind of wanted to cry and I was just feeling kind of unstable and just like, and I knew I was just kind of integrating all of this energy, right? But I just, I wanted to feel better and I couldn't quite figure out how to get myself there. And really all it took was literally breathing in some of this blue sage and I feel like 1000% better now I feel like this feeling of peace and freedom inside of me and it literally like was breathed into me from the sage so <laughs> um you know it doesn't have to be sage <laughs> for you but I think especially because of the Taurus new moon 
right? It, it, there, there is really an emphasis right now of like physical things and how you can use the physical world to your benefit, right? Um, there could be something that like quite physical, it could be a food, it could be a, like a, the scent from a candle, it could be a crystal, it could be like a stretch or an exercise or an activity or something very, very physical. There could be something physical to support you and it's going to be different for each and every one of you just depending on like what it is that like what frequency you, you need to release and then what frequency you need to bring inside of yourself right now. So just really open up to that and ask to be led to the, to the thing that can help you shift to the frequency that would be more preferable to you, right? Um, and you will find it, right? Your Gaia wants to bring it to you and your soul wants to align you with it. So just set that intention and allow yourself to come to it. And there very, very, very much could be a physical thing to help you shift <laughs> your frequency. And uh, I'm, I'm very specifically being shown um, for somebody anyway to experiment with like spellcraft or with the witch's path, right? With spellcraft and the witch's path, whatever that means for you, right? Um, I go, I kind of toggle on and off with exploring like witchcraft themed things. Um, I haven't really felt that drawn into the witch's path, but for in this life anyway, I've been a witch in other lives. I haven't really been drawn into it, but it like comes and goes with me. I kind of explore it sometimes and then most of the time don't really think about it that much. But so for, for a few people anyway, you could really benefit at least at this point in time for exploring r witchcraft and spellcraft because um, many different types of witchcraft and spellcraft, you know, involves using physical tools, right? Physical tools creating spells with all different types of actual things, right? Actual physical things. So that could be relevant for somebody right now. Oh, and you know, um, like Beltane is this week, right? Beltane is this week. It's funny because, well, okay. So a note on the date of Beltane, I guess, is that there's a few different ways of deciding the date for Beltane. A lot of people actually celebrate it on May 1st, which is today. So you could be celebrating Beltane today, which would be awesome. Um, I know my hometown always celebrated, like they had like, they called it May Day, right? May Day, it was a May Day. We had a May Day festival on the first Saturday in May. So I know some places do that. Um, if you want to get astrological about the day for Beltane, it would be, it's actually May 5th this year, if I remember looking that up correctly, which is also the day of the Uranus sun conjunction. So if you, that um, May 5th is the astrological day for Beltane because Beltane is one of the Celtic cross quarter days, um, which happens on when the sun is at 15 degrees of the fixed signs, right? Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. And that's the astrological way of calculating it. And it's very interesting that that's also happening on <laughs> the same day as the sun Uranus conjunction. So that is going to be extra like blissful and surprising. So why am I talking about Beltane? Yeah. So for some people, for somebody there, there is like, you might be receiving like witchy activations this week. You could be remembering lives where you were a witch. You could be getting a lot more interested in witchcraft and like that kind of side of your spirituality. And it's like, definitely roll with that, explore that because I feel like there could be something very like concrete and very grounding for you in that kind of practice, especially if the kind of witchcraft you're interested in is like, it like involves plants, <laughs> right? Involves plants, especially if you're in the Northern hemisphere, right? When the plants are all blooming right now. Green witchcraft. <sighs> this smells so good. I wish everyone could smell this right now. Mm. It's like peace in a leaf. Okay, one final message. The long way around. <laughs> I know that's how we've all been feeling. We've been on the long way around. But this week, Sun Uranus conjunction, Venus entering Aries, there's going to be some, something's going to shake loose. There's going to be surprises. All right. Are you worried that by going at your own pace, you won't realize your heart's yearnings? Part of your inner debate may very well include the needs or emotions of others. You may feel that you are inadequate whenever you fall short of their expectations. However, now and then, your soul will express an imposing need for tranquility that others may not understand. Therefore, begin by taking notice of the ebb and flow of your natural emotional and bodily rhythms. When you acknowledge your natural impulse to slow down, 
you will intuit how best to seize the moment. Be of service to the people in need around you or attend to yourself and do whatever you feel needs doing. Allow moments of sweetness to arise in the thicket of responsibility. A deep soul call is inviting you to consider parts of your day as a time for just being. <sighs> All right, guys. Good luck with this energy this week. Sending you so much love and light. Bye.